Blue Stockings is open from 11 to 11 every day of the week. Some of our bookshelves look like they could be an academic syllabus for the Black Atlantic and queer history. Some of our shelves are full of zines, children's and young adult books. We realize that people encounter radical thought through a variety of ways and that thinking seriously about ideas has always been a part of how we get organized. And our zines are really popular here and I think it's just a really cool mix of having community organizations like the Doula Project, having their practical support zines that are sharing information that people might need to know about their health, to just having a zine full of like weird poems or jokes. So it's, it's a really fun mix and they're a really popular part of what we sell here. We encompass so many different kinds of um, activist strategies. I think mm -hmm. sort of reducing the Blue Stockings to a feminist bookstore maybe does it a disservice because I mean we're we're a feminist bookstore, we're a activist bookstore for sex workers, for trans people, for black and brown folks, for disabled folks, for so many different peoples mm -hmm. that does that encompass feminism? Yes, but mm -hmm. I think it's I don't know, it feels a little homogenizing, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I know bookstore isn't our name, but I think being able to have this community hub for groups across the boroughs really has been a critical part of our work for a very long time. Since our store started in 1999, we have been here on the Lower East Side, and it's precisely in those past two decades that we have seen so many changes in the neighborhood surrounding us. And so the fact that Blue Stockings has managed to stay a strong, powerful bookstore and activist center in this space is really something to celebrate. I think people are surprised when they find out that we stay stable as a bookstore through selling books. Mm -hmm. We don't make our money through selling tote bags or through selling our coffee. And mm -hmm. I think we make a really powerful case for bookstores across the country that people read books and you can sell books and people will come and search for those spaces. I have seen so many of the spaces that are beloved to me close and so many of my loved ones have too. The space is important to so many people, to so many of the artists and creators and activists of the city. And to be able to show up for the people who have made the space what it is, we need that stability. We think the best way to be accountable to the communities that come into the space every day is to have community funded grassroots people who can and want to show up to the store in this way sustaining the store on a base level so that we can have a safety net. If we're always on the defensive, and if we're always wondering what's gonna happen if the yoga studio upstairs leaks, if our air conditioner breaks down, we can't do what our communities really need us to do, which is to dream big about how can this space continue to grow? We don't wanna stay static. We don't wanna do the same thing we've been doing for 20 years. Part of our politics is being able to really dream about and manifest what can the future look like. We're so excited to have so many people here come out for Adrian and Marie Brown and pleasure activism. With the advent of Sesta and Fosta and mm -hmm. with sort of growing movements to sort of censor marginalized people mm -hmm. on the internet, I think it's especially important to have physical spaces that mm -hmm. are making sure that marginalized people feel safer, mm -hmm. that they feel like they have community surrounding them. I think that's what we intend to try and keep doing with our fundraiser to try and hold space for another 20 years mm -hmm. for all the marginalized people who count on us to be here.